This is Twit. So we've all become so accustomed to the way that our phones work the way it is now that it can be a bit of a challenge to think outside of the black slab that we're used to. Innovation works in mysterious ways. Sometimes instead of re recreating the wheel, taking a look at the systems we take for granted can actually lead to radical shifts in how we think about how we could interact with technology in new and different ways, such as the case with a concept design called Magic UX created by the folks at Special Projects. And joining us to talk about this concept uh, is experience designer Adrian Westaway. Welcome to the show, Adrian. We appreciate it. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's great to have you here. So uh, I, I first saw this concept kind of bouncing around last week and people were passing it, you know, writing a lot of articles about it and everything. Uh, and in some ways, it's very similar to what we're used to in like in everyday real life. And in other ways, it's a, like I said, a radical shift in the way we use our smartphones. So why don't we begin with what wasn't working, what isn't working uh, in the ways that we use smartphone UX currently? How is it failing? Yeah, well, I mean, things are like improving, you know, all the time. But one thing that really kind of bugged me and bugged us at the studio was when you're kind of when you find yourself at a time when you've got a small screen, so you, you know, you're not at your computer and you suddenly need to do a, something that maybe involves several different parts of an app or several different apps. So I don't know maybe you're on the train and, and you've got like a PDF and you kind of need to copy and paste bits of it into an email and you're kind of maybe doing some research or, you know, even little things like when you're trying to book a flight and you're kind of looking at all these options and you have to kind of compare them. And it seemed to, to us that the... Um, it was almost like the space between the apps hadn't really been considered. It was almost like, you know, once you're in an app, everything's great and everything's wonderful and nicely controlled. But it was that movement from one app to another and, and what happens in that gap between them that felt really inefficient. And I mainly, you know, I'm, I guess like the, the biggest example is just, you know, copying and pasting bits of text or images and kind of moving them from one place to another. You almost kind of had to devote so much attention, uh, you know, which would distract you from the task you're actually trying to do. Um, just thinking about how you switch from one place to another. And we started just exploring ways of making that um, action more fluid. But that's really the the kind of the kind of thing that was bugging us the most. Mm -hmm. And then, and then of course, we're showing video right now of sure. kind of what this has led to, um, kind of set up the the kind of destination. Then out of that thinking came Magic UX, your, your concept design, and kind of explain a little bit around how that kind of interacts with the physical world into the digital world. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the idea really simply is that when you're kind of working with, uh, you know, pen and paper or physical kind of things, you, you would lay them out on your desk in front of you. And just to move from one thing to another, you wouldn't even think about it. You would just kind of look over here, look over there, look over there. It's just really, really easy. You don't even have to think. Um, and we just thought, well, could we kind of mimic that behavior and enable you to kind of switch between things by actually moving your device to different places? So very simply, uh, the uh, invention allows you to kind of assign apps to, to certain spaces. And by moving the device to those different spaces, it will um, bring those apps into focus uh, and kind of giving you that same sort of feeling that you would get in the physical world. Hmm. So how is it, it looks a little bit like augmented reality. Um, how is yeah. it different than just the augmented reality that we're starting to get used to? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 absolutely. When when you kind of look at um, like a lot of the AR kind of, uh, also when you, also in VR as well, when you kind of look at operating systems that are existing in, in VR headsets, you know, in a similar way, they kind of map things out around you. Um, and this is really just taking this sort of idea, but making it work on a very, very small screen that kind of kind of isn't in front of you all the time. Um, so with AR, you would kind of be looking through and kind of, you know, seeing, uh, almost looking through the phone. Uh, whereas here, we're kind of just moving the phone to different places to bring it up. But in essence, it's very, very similar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in the idea of, you know, the that physical items do occupy their own space. And we're very used to that. Like you said, if you set a piece of paper over here, you're used to kind of moving over to that space. Smartphones, on the other hand, we're very used to the fact that everything exists inside of this little window. And we, you know, yeah. the, the, the way we do anything with it is with our fingers instead of actual movement. Um, and, and it sounds like you have this running, I think you said in uh, before the interview, you have this running on an iPhone. So in use, is that motion like, do you find that it actually helps? Does it does it speed up yeah. your your workflow? Could it po possibly be a distraction uh, yeah. away from how people are using their phone? 
It's a really good point. And like, because we put it online, you know, we've been able to sort of accelerate the feedback by sure. kind of, you know, getting lots of comments and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I think if you take it too literally and kind of imagine these kind of big jerky movements, that actually doesn't necessarily feel like an improvement. Right. But we imagine this being used um, only in spe like specific circumstances when it needs to be used. So, you know, if you're kind of just in one app and only using one app and you don't need to kind of be interacting with other ones, then we don't imagine this system being active. It would only be kind of um, in, uh, initiated at the right moment. Um, so I think certainly in those moments, like, for example, moving information between documents or kind of planning an appointment. Um, you know, I think there's a video we've got online where you're kind of emailing someone and trying to find some space in your calendar and then find a place to meet. Um, in those circumstances, yeah, I, it absolutely does save time and, and hopefully makes that experience much more delightful. How do you imagine that it would be uh, initiated? Yeah, well, so um, there are there, there are various ways. And so we, we, we have actually um, uh, uh, filed a patent on this. And the great thing about patents is it really um, forces you to think of like every possible use of, of the technology. And, and so in the video, to make things really simple, uh, we've kind of demonstrated it that showing that a user would actually kind of pin these apps to a certain space uh, to actually enable it. Um, but there's no reason why they couldn't be um, automatically uh, brought up around the app that you're using based on what you're doing. So, for example, maybe when I open my email, I've got a workflow set up that always has my calculator to one side and my calendar to the other. Um, but also going a little bit further than that, um, they could be um, actually um, sort of initiated based on geographic locations. So, for example, I could arrive at my, my actual like WeWork desk and then certain apps are laid out in the way that I want them to be in that place. So there, there are various ways you could kind of get into it. And we kind of chose for the video anyway, just to show the really simple ones so people would understand the, the core concept. So if I was like laying in my bed, then Twitter and Netflix would show up. But if I was <laughs> yeah. in the office, would be Google yeah. Got it. Exactly, exactly. And so like these could either be like initiated from a location or from potentially contact with another device. So maybe, you know, you could, you could, in theory, tap it onto a, a smart TV and, and, and have other information appearing around it, too. So, yeah, like we don't show all those things in the, the kind of concept, but in the patent, it, there's a lot of scope for other uses. Maybe you have RFID in your pillow. Well, I'm assuming you probably yes. do, Megan. You're, you're, you're all into the IoT stuff, so that would make sense. Um, so you have this running on an iPhone right now to kind of test out the UX and everything. Um, is, that, is that the platform? Like, is there something about iOS and its AR platform that makes it uh, a good way to go? Or could you see these kind of apps hitting other other platforms as well? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, in theory, we've designed this from a technical point of view to be able to work on pretty much any smartphone. Sure. And it doesn't always need to rely on the camera. It, it, um, the camera is useful in certain situations, but um, it can actually work very well with just using the accelerometers. Um, so you don't necessarily need to rely on, you know, computationally heavy kind of processes. Um, I mean, we always kind of imagined it in I, in iOS as the sort of dream scenario. Um, it just feels like that sort of motion would go well with it. Um, but, but um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to live in the operating system. Uh, it could also live uh, within an app and just that, that certain app's ecosystem as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does seem like something that uh, you would see more in Android first. It seems like you'd have to partner with Apple yeah. In order, like they wouldn't allow you to just have no. that level. Um, you'd have to, you know, they you'd have to be on their team, as it were. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, and so our demo kind of fakes um, certain apps to give us that feeling that we're in, like the mail app or we're in the kind of picture app. But the only way to kind of get in it would be via, you know, um, Google or Google or Apple to get it into most of the OSs. Sure. Now, have you heard from uh, any developers? I mean, obviously, last week seems like it was a it was a big week for this. It was being passed around or written or written about a lot. I'm sure that some developers have expressed interest. Uh, thankfully, you've patented it, so you know yeah. you would have to be involved with this. So that's a good thing. Uh, but is anyone uh, like is anyone expressing interest in taking this from a concept to reality? Yeah, we've had some really interesting conversations um, with with uh, quite a wide range of companies. So some kind of quite large tech companies um, and other kind of um, quite uh, companies working on interfaces for quite specific problems, uh, like almost like more industrial things that they're trying to solve. And um, so, we're, yeah, we've been really excited. That's the advantage of putting stuff online and just kind of starting to talk to people. Um, but, yeah, we, we've had some... Um, 
sort of, uh, yeah, larger tech companies and then some quite bespoke uh, applications that we're looking at. Well, that's pretty exciting. And then you have a yeah. whole host of other uh, projects that you're working on. Um, real quick, I suppose, what's another of your favorite kind of ideas that you have well, posted up on your sure. site? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, so um, we, uh, oh, that's a really tough question. But so, I mean, half our time we're working for, you know, doing these sorts of things for other companies and the other half of the time we're kind of coming up with them ourselves. Sure. And I guess my favorite one at the moment is uh, we made a kind of calendar um, out of uh, Lego bricks. Um, it's one of those things that's quite hard to explain, uh, but you might, you, you can certainly find the video of it online, but it's, um, it's a massive like wall planner. Oh, you got it. Amazing. You guys are so fast. <laughs> um it's called the Bit Planner, and and basically um, the idea is that you can plan um, a, a three months uh, of work for a whole kind of team um, out of uh, plastic bricks, like Lego bricks or any kind of bricks, um, and you get this wonderfully kind of tactile, physical way of planning, and it works really well in a group because planning three months projects is really hard to do even on a big screen. And a lot of people always kind of go back to whiteboards and post-it notes and stuff. And so you can kind of do this in Lego, but then we've made an app uh, which enables you to just point the phone at that calendar um, and it will just suck up all that information like you see in the video and then digitize it and map it onto your Google calendar or whatever kind of digital calendar you use. So it's this, it's again, we're really excited by those sort of physical digital um, uh, projects and it's kind of trying to get the benefits of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. So you can see it now. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. You guys are so creative. Uh, I love what you're doing. Uh, Adrian Westaway, of course, specialprojects.studio. Is that where you want people to go to find all that's these it. projects and more? That's it. Exactly. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Adrian, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much cool. for joining us. Today. Thanks, Jason. Bye, Megan. All right. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon.